Thank you, Hassan, for this kind word. First of all, I want to thank the AFRA uh, Society to invite me and give a presentation regarding, I would say, the title Cope with Cryptozoospermia and Strategy of Cryopreservation. But I would say the main part will be, first of all, to deal with difficult ICSI. As you can see, this uh, uh, girl is uh, searching after spermatozoa for more than eight hours, and she's tired. And we can talk about difficult ICSI, and this is, will be the objectives of the presentation, when we faced in the ejaculate cryptozoospermia, complete azoospermia, severe teratozoospermia, high degree of DNA fragmentation and anomaly of the chromatin, and also in case of azoospermia, and also difficult ICSI when we have to face with a limited number of spermatozoa that were cryopreserved before, uh, in case of severe oligo of cryptozoospermia, and also in case of testicular biopsy. And today I will focus my presentation first on the cryptozoospermia and complete astenozoospermia and as, uh, azoospermia and see the strategy of sperm prepare preparation. And the second part of my presentation, I will, I will uh, deal with uh, the cryopreservation of limited number of cryopreserved uh, cryo sperm. So, male infertility uh, uh, concerns around 50% uh, of the infertile couple, and we can see that the percentage, the con concentration of spermatozoa all over the year decrease, decrease, uh, and mainly due to pollution. And I hope that if this line continues, that will, this will be not the end of Sapien. But be optimist. So, in uh, A92, uh, there was a spectacular progress in the therapeutic management of uh, patients with severe alteration in sperm parameter. And so, Palermo introduced the ICSI procedure. But we have different kinds of sperm that we have to deal. And one kind of sperm that we have to deal is cryptozoospermia. That means extremely low concentration of spermatozoa. And most of the time, we have to centrifuge this sperm and check in the pellet if sperm are present. Oh, this is the normal sperm preparation for moderate OAT. That means a centrifugation gradient per call, followed by swim up, and we place afterwards the sperm in an exit dish. But this is not possible to use such methodology for cryptozoospermia sperm. In such case, First of all, as I told you, we centrifuge the sperm, check in the pellet if we find some spermatozoa, and afterwards we share the different the pellets in several uh, colons uh, with only one layer, 90% gradient. Why such amount of uh, colons and one one layer? Uh, in order to I would say dilute the debris, the wrong cell, red blood cells that would be present on the layers and avoid uh, the saturation of the layers in order that we are sure that some spermatozoa can go through in the 90% uh, uh, gradient. If we know in advance, uh, during a previous staff meeting, be before that we start the IVF cycle, that we have to treat such a difficult case, we organize the work in a way that the treatment and the search for spermatozoa start before the oocyte pickups because it takes time. And because what our objective is not to avoid oocyte aging, that after the oocyte pickup, that we don't have to wait too long to search spermatozoa. In case that we have to wait too long, so we consider then oocyte vitrification. Also, for such kind of sperm preparation, uh, uh, it is an extensive lab work. Uh, we try to obtain a final suspension with few debris, one cells, germ cells, erythrocytes. 
because we want to avoid that all these kinds of debris may stick on the injection pipette and make the ICSI quite more difficult. Therefore, we have to be aware that the quality of the preparation will determine the time that we will spend to perform the ICSI, the management of the oocyte out of the incubator, not to, uh, the, the oocyte don't have to stay too long out of the incubator, and we have to avoid the aging of the oocytes. Our rules in our center is vitrification of oocyte, maximum three hours of the oocyte pickup. If impossible to give the semen sample without three hours, vitrification of all the oocytes or at least one part. This is how we prepare the dish, ICSI dish, in case of class normal ORT semen. We perform a swimming of the sperm in a snake drops, we call this. But in case of cryptosepermia, we <clears throat> place some microdops in the dish and we try to find spermatozoa in each microdrops. But we can have cryptozoospermia, but together also astenozoospermia. And this makes the life more complicated. And if we observed complete immortal sperm in the first ejaculate, we ask for a second ejaculate. And in the second ejaculate, we can also observe a 100% immortal sperm. So what we do, we look better and is it a virtual or absolute astenozoospermia? And in a majority of cases, I would say, and we find after extensive processing of the semen, some motile spermatozoa, and we can perform the ICSI. But we have also, we observed also sometimes absolute astenozoospermia. And then question mark regarding ICSI, IMSI. In fact, uh, absolute azoospermia may be associated with complete necrozoospermia, ultrastructural abnormalities of the flagellum, Carter-Jenner syndrome, but in general, I would say when we have Carter-Jenner syndrome, the concentration of the spermatozoa is higher, or then we have plenty of different uh, reasons and etiology that uh, may explain the absence of motility. So, in such case, we have to perform before XCMC vitality tests. And for example, we have different tests, the hypoosmotic swelling test, mechanical, mechanical touch of the flagellum, motility enhancer with the, uh, uh, phospho, uh, the inhibitor of the phosphodiesterase, theophylline or pentoxifiline, the laser, laser touch also, uh, bill refringence. In our center, what we, perf what we do, first of all, we applied uh, pentoxifiline or theophylline. We check if we find motile spermatozoa in the drop. If the spermatozoa are not motile, what we do, we remove a, spa a small part of the media and place back after an hypoosmotic solution and check if we find hypoosmotic swelling test uh, and check if we uh, observe some curling tail. This is the way how we perform our, uh, uh, the sperm uh, analysis. So, afterwards, okay, if the vitality tests are totally negative, that means necrosospermia, uh, we stop, we don't perform the XCMC because already more than 25 years ago, one of my colleagues, Martinez, has shown that no ongoing pregnancy with totally immortal spermatozoa from the ejaculate and even epididymis, spermatozoa that were necrosospermia. But if we are in, in, uh, to face with such situation, uh, what we have to propose then, surgical sperm retrieval. But surgical sperm retrieval in an unforeseen situation, it is complicated because most of the time the patient, uh, we have no fasting patients, or also in, for the organization of the doctor, it is a big problem. So in, I would say in 50% of the case, the only solution 
is to perform oocyte vitrification. But in case that we perform testicular biopsy, uh, then the doctor is able to do the oocyte pickup, the patient is already prepared, but first of all, I want to, uh, um, I would say, uh, give, say some words about my previous boss, Professor Skersman, with whom we obtained the first pregnancy with testicular sperm. It was a very famous andereologist. And so we performed testicular biopsy, and in case of non-obstructive azospermia, we, uh, the doctor, according to the, 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 the doctors, some prefer uh, testicular extraction one biopsy or the multiple biopsy, and some doctors uh, microthesy. So we, in the lab, we, per, we receive different kinds of tissue, one piece, several pieces, or uh, <coughs> seminifer tubules. And the first important step that we have to do is to wash several times the tissue in order to avoid and to reduce the amount of red blood cells. Because I observed in some lab what happened, they received the tissue and directly they start the scratching of the tissue in the middle of plenty of red blood cells. Can you imagine afterwards the complication to find spermatozoa between all these erythrocytes? In the second steps, after cleaning very well the, the, the tissue, we start the scratching mechanical processes of the testicular tissue with needle or with slide or with a filter, we scratch in a filter or with a potter, scratching in a potter. And after that, we perform vortexing. In our centers, no, we apply mostly uh, find mincing with needles. In case that we don't find spermatozoa uh, in the tissue of, uh, between the different cells that were scratched, we add then uh, collagenase to uh, induce an enzymatic uh, testicular tissue uh, uh, digestion. Also, but we never use this technique, but some propose it. In case that we have some, a lot of red blood cell, you can add some uh, red blood cell lysis solution. Now, after that, this step, we check on the microscope if we can find some, uh, this, some spermatozoa. We inform the surgeon about the presence or not of the spermatozoa. And after that, we place the tissue, mixed, the mixed tissue, in different on the gradient. If we find spermatozoa, eh, then we uh, place the tissue in general on four columns with two layers, 70% and 90%. If we find no sperm, then we try to dilute more in order that the sperm, if the, if in order that the possible sperm that are present are not uh, stopped by the different tissue. So we try to dilute more. We perform that four to eight colons and only 90% gradient afterwards centrifugation uh, for 20 minutes. So, then we made the ICSI drop, uh, the ICSI dishes with the micro drops, we check in the, in the drops. If we find no spermatozoa in the drop, directly we perform oocyte vitrification. In case that we find spermatozoa, but no motile one, then we perform also the vitality test as I showed previously, if it is negative or side vitrification. But in case that we find motile spermatozoa, then we 
uh, perform the ICSI IMSI. If the vitality test is also positive, we perform ICSI IMSI. But in this case also, we take, uh, we are very careful for the sperm because we will afterwards, if possible, freeze, uh, cryopreserve the sperm that we still have over. In general, in non-obstructive azospermia and in case of cryptozospermia, we freeze a small number of spermatozoa. Also, we have cases with di diagnostic. Huh? So uh, we've, we received that the men came in our center and provide two semen samples with three months interval. And after washing and concentration of all the egg ejaculate, we search uh, for spermatozoa in the suspension. If we find no sperm at all, then this patient and his wife will start an IVF cycle with surgical retrieval some weeks later. But in case that we find some spermatozoa, we will then freeze uh, uh, the spermatozoa that we find. So what you see that freezing a small number of sperm is finally a procedure that we do often. I would not say that the percentage is higher, but sometimes we have to do it. And we do this in case of cryptozospermia of severe oligozospermia. In case of azospermia, mostly in case of non-obstructive azospermia. And the ability to create, to cryopreserve small number of spermatozoa avoids the requirement for multiple thesis. Thesa. Then also case to free small number in case of preserving fertility before chemo or radio or surgery treatment. And also in case of idiopathic forms, we have sometimes a patient that provide, that give us a normal sample. And after six months with a huge reduction in the quality of the sperm, in such case, uh, we uh, cryopreserve also the sperm. But cryopreservation, no, the second part. We, uh, oh, it works. When we have, for example, a sperm with more than five million spermatozoa, what we do, we expose the ejaculate to cryoprotectant, the, uh, the normal solution that uh, you can find in the different companies, uh, a solution in general with glycerol, and we uh, place the sperm inside a straw. When the concentration decreases uh, between 1 million and 4 million, and less than 1 million, what we do, we reduce the drop of media that contain the spermatozoa. The aim is, the objective is to know when we will perform the warming, we know where the sperm will be located. And this is very important. Afterwards, we perform the conventional freezing method, the straw eight centimeters above the liquid nitrogen, 10 minutes in the vapors. In case that we have a testicular biopsy, what we do, we can freeze the sperm. But in general, if we find spermatozoa directly in one part of the tissue, we work for, with uh, this part of the tissue and we cryopreserve the different seminiferous tubules that we open slightly and then we aspirate the seminiferous, the seminiferous tubules in the straw. Then in such case, 15 to 20 minutes equilibration with the cryoprotectant solution. So, but what are the drawbacks of conventional cryopreservation techniques? The conventional cryopreservation techniques, that means loading the sperm in the straw, are inadequate for preserving rare spermatozoa and can result in sperm loss due to sperm adherence to the inner wall of the straw, arch centrifugation post-warming, washing procedures post-warming, 
and dilution in large amount of media, which may require or of microscopic screening to locate sperm and motile sperm after warming. So, the challenge, therefore, is to try to preserve a small number of sperm, and that means the search of rare spermatozoa. Okay, then we have to find easily after warming enough spermatozoa, and the objective is that we have to know where the sperm are located on the device. That means this concerns the technical aspect and the carrier system. Any second uh, step, also, we have to, uh, this only sperm that we find there has to remain viable after warming. So, we have cryopreservation protocol, the conventional with above the vapor of the programmable freeze protocol versus the vitrification. So, now in the literature, you are nice review um, concerning all these steps. But we have then to deal with the carrier and the cryopreservation procedure. And first of all, let's go to the carrier. We have first of all biological carrier. And the first one that was proposed already almost 25 years ago by the team of Jack Owen was cryopreservation of single human spermatozoa in an empty zona pellucida. That means that he had, um, zona pelli, uh, he had all sites, unfertilized all sites. He empty with the pipettes, the, uh, remove the cytoplasm, empty zona pellicida, place back spermatozoa, and then the, the zona pellicida was cryopreserved in straw mode with the conventional freezing protocol. So different literature has shown that you can use human, hamster, mice, or sites, mice, zona pellicida, and with this method, ejaculate testicular and epidemial sperm were uh, cryopreserved. The team of Cohen finally observed and obtained pregnancies using this technology, 30% uh, implantation similar to fresh mesatase and similar to you know, classical conventional ICSI. Then afterwards, uh, there was another way uh, the Volvox Globator was an alternative in countries that prohibit the destructive use of oocyte, even after fertilization has failed. And this happened in uh, Germany and in Austria. So this is a kind of uh, uh, algus uh, that you place in culture and they came together and they uh, produce a kind of sphere. And inside this sphere, you introduce the spermatozoa that was after cryopreserved in a straw. After the biologic career, we have the non-biologic career, yeah? that means principle of, of encapsulation, and this, I would say, artificial zona pellucida, and they mimic the zona pellucida. We have different types, alginic acid drops, agarose, gel microsphere, and, uh, bon, you can see, this is nice. Look like zona pellicida. They introduce one spermatozoa inside. And this is a nice, also, this hyaluron phenolic hydroxyl capsule. Eh? And I would say it is like also zona pellicida. But the advantage of this technique is that when you warm back the uh, artificial zona pellucida, I would say you place afterwards in a solution of hyaluronidas that will dilute the hyaluronic acid. And so you know in your petri dish you can have a look and you can see your spermatozoa under the microscope during the, uh, the, uh, the removal of the zona pellucida, the digestion of the zona pellucida uh, uh, with hyaluronidase. After that, I will come back on the drawbacks of all these techniques. So, with all these techniques, this exposure to the solution of cryoprotectant, in general glycerol, before loading in a straw and cooling above the vapor. And after that, we have an other uh, carrier eh, to uh, 
deposit the rare sperm, we call this the rare sperm micro droplets freezing methods. It's uh, in polystyrene and propylene carrier device, and we have different devices. Uh, the sperm is deposited directly on this device that contains cryoprotectant or simple media that has been previously deposited on the carrier device. So here it's cryoloops. You can see here there are quite a lot of spermatozoa, but they deposit with a, a small drop on the loops, and after that they place back in a cryovial. Here we have the sleepers. This is a kind of polystyrene uh, plastic, eh? and you place a small drop of media, and you deposit afterwards eh, the uh, spermatozoa in this drop, and you insert this one in the cryovial and plunge afterwards, or uh, you perform uh, vitrification or uh, above the vapor. Then you have the cry, the plastic petri dish. This is a very old uh, technique that was performed by a uh, well known Jacques Testa from France. Eh? And he directly uh, he, uh, placed the sperm in, uh, micro, in drops, micro drops in a petri dish and uh, he uh, performed the cryo preservation of the petri dish. Then we have the cryotop, well known for oocytes or embryo. Uh, uh, cryopreservation. Also the principle. Then we have different devices, the cryoleaf, all is based on the same principle, but the different shape of uh, uh, polystyrene slice. Uh, the last one is uh, for the, uh, from Berkovic also, a uh, kind of also a small micro drops that you can place in a device that you introduce also in a cryovial. So, what condition the cryopreservation method must meet to be effective? Fast recovery of the spermatozoa post warming, high recovery rate, high survival motility rates, easy handling method, does not take up too much storage space, and aseptic storage is important. And first of all, we can see the recovery rate according to different type of device. And you can see that the majority of recovery are between 80 and 100%. So I would say it worked quite well to recover the sperm. And the motility rate, but I would say that the motility, this is percentage that I uh, take from the literature, but we don't know exactly the initial motility before uh, the cryopreservation in most of the cases. But you can see that we quite an average of 50% of the sperm were motile after warming. But the drawbacks of the device for empty zona pellucida, this exposure of human gametes and embryo to rodent zona, uh, uh, sperm bring, uh, bind, can bind to the ZP3, uh, the leaving some post DNA fragment behind. So it was not possible to continue. And the same with the algae because it was unacceptable in a clinical setting to store human sperm uh, in algae. The other artificial zona pellucida, uh, today almost no clinical data. The different device, plas the plastic uh, device, uh, few clinical data accepted for the, uh, the one of Berkovic. Uh, uh, it obtained a 30% uh, implantation. And then uh, the plastic petri dish, the cryotrip and cryoleaf, uh, this non aseptic, no, uh, not hermetically, hermetically closed. Our experience, what we do, we use VitriSafe, the device that we use for freezing all site and embryo. What we perform, we place the sperm in the gutter with a stripper. Next, we place the cryoprotectant solution of uh, glycerol, we make a mixture, we place them back directly in a protective straw, we seal it, so both are sealed, and exposure 15 minutes to 20 minutes at 4 degrees or 10 minutes at room temperature, and afterwards above the vapor. To remove the sperm, what we do, we warm at room temperature, and with a stripper, we remove, we aspirate gently this drop, 
we place this drop in the middle of a pet, in the petri dish. Then afterwards, we place some drop of media, uh, uh, medium uh, in in, uh, uh, in the surrounding of the sperm drop, and afterwards we perform. Uh, we make small bridges in order to dilute the, small, the drops, but we know that the spermatozoa will be located there. Afterwards, we uh, place the PVP, the XC uh, drops to in the injection drop. We cover with all and we wait a little. If we find no motile sperm, we add afterwards pentoxifilite. So the results with this, uh, this is for example, we calculate with sub uh, low number of spermatozoa, we don't give a number in concentration. We say we find one sperm per 10, 15 fields, uh, observation 400. That means that we realize more the difficulty that we will have. So in total, we perform 38 cryopreservation, 30 warming, and until now, we got uh, uh, eight births uh, and uh, two ongoing pregnancy births still lost. In some cases, we don't have enough spermatozoa, and then we have to perform vitrification of the remaining oocyte. Also, what I want to say, not to forget, in case that we want spermatozoa, in such case, we perform also all the time oocyte activation, because we know that during cryopreservation, all the system of uh, the uh, cytosol that contain the PLC zeta, the activating factor, may disappear. So, no, slow freezing or vitrification. Actually, why vitrification might work better than oocyte on embryo? Because the quantity of water in the free water in the spermatozoa is very, very low. So the chance of crystallization probability is quite low. But finally, until now, there are some articles were published, but I can say that there is no yet a uh, big, um, uh, huge data showing the superiority of vitrification uh, uh, compared to the uh, classical uh, cryopreservation method. Also, we have to take care also cryo damage can also alter the, uh, alter the mitochondria by uh, ROS uh, production and also different aspects of the protein, mRNA, genome, and epigenome. So there are still plenty of study that has to be done for the future. The conclusion, processing for semen quality is not an easy task because we have to face a lot of unexpected situation, unexpected cryptospermia, azospermia the day of the oocyte pickup absence vital sperm in the fresh or frozen biopsy, and difficult cryo procedure. Oocyte vitrification now makes it possible to reduce stress and deal with unforeseen situation. In case of cryptozoospermia or non-obstructive azospermia, the challenge for the cryobiologist is to optimize all the steps to make ICSI less difficult and find rapidly the rare vital sperm. So we have to adjust the sperm preparation method to optimize the search for spermatozoa, optimize processing of the harvest tissue for fresh ICSI or cryopreservation, use an adequate way, uh, use in an adequate way the vitality test. Master the cryopreservation of spermatozoa for crypto and for crypto and asynchronous biopsy in case of asynchronous biopsy. We have to promote small, small number of spermatozoa in a minimal volume, in an hermetically closed device, in a straw instead of a cryotube for space storage reasons. Conventional freezing versus vitrification is still in debate. For the future, maybe we have to apply defensive strategy to protect the sperm cells against damage. So the biologist is not a robot but still a master of craftsmen. A good collaboration between the medical part, the biologist, and the coordination personnel is mandatory to optimize all the different steps. I want to thank all the people from Austria and Belgium, and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very, very much.
really impressive and uh, knowledgeable. Before we start, the, the many questions that we will ask you. Um, our conference was delayed to the 2nd of June 21. So we hope that you will have time if uh, COVID situation is good. Because uh, we agreed on having a workshop and uh, some presentations in this uh, conference. Second thing, do you give us permission to have your presentation on our YouTube? Uh, yeah, I, I can I can, I can do the presentation. I will send you the presentation. So yeah, so you you agree? Yeah, yes. yes. And, and also we have two interest groups, one of andrology um, uh, chaired by Professor Methat Hamer and one of uh, embryology by uh, Dr. Ashraf uh, Abu Ali. And we we would kindly ask you to participate with answering some of the questions that will appear during the next three or four weeks on this uh, interest group. Yeah, and yeah, no problem. no problem. I know that you're very helpful. Thank you very we much. Keep, we keep in touch for this. Perfect. Yes, yes, of course. So now, uh, who will start the question? Professor Methat Amir? Yes, uh, Professor Dr. Pierre, I have uh, two questions. Uh, in our experience, we have found that the freezing a very little amount of sperm in cryptospermia is associated with a lower pregnancy rate compared to normal semen parameter of the sticker sperm. Do you have the same feeling? Uh, I would say uh, I show you the data of our pregnancy rate, but there are, I would say, few cases, only eight pregnancies. Uh, uh, because we don't have, in your country, maybe in your country, I know that maybe you have better sperm parameters because we have quite maybe more infections. Huh? But uh, uh, cryptospermia uh, is, I would say, we have to deal this in 2% of our cases. So we don't, uh, I cannot tell you that uh, uh, in a general conclusion. But compared to, uh, uh, if I compare, um, cryptospermia, yes, we have low. But if I cryopreserve uh, non-obstructive azospermia, I don't find a huge reduction. But in case of ejaculate, from the ejaculate, yes. Yes, we have the same finding. In non-obstructive azospermia, it doesn't make a difference. Yeah, yes. uh, also, I want to, to ask you another question. Uh, some uh, surgeon or some centers advocate that the use of testicular sperm in such uh, cryptospermic patients will lead to higher pregnancy results. In our experience, we didn't find any difference. What about yours? No, I, I, I would say that when we have a cryptozo, uh, cryptospermia, all, um, personally, we, we prefer to uh, perform a biopsy because we know that cryptospermia, the sperm probably is in a bad environment with a lot of probably oxid uh, free radical. So there is a tendency to, in such case, to uh, offer a testicular biopsy. But in case that we cannot do the testicular biopsy for different reasons, then we do uh, uh, the freezing of crypto, uh, the freezing of this such kind of sperm. Yes. So I guess you have a better results with the sperm than yeah, 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 yes, yes, yes. We have better results. Better, it's better. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Thank you. Dr. Nihal. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Professor Lapierre. Uh, I want to ask you about your opinion uh, on using motility stimulating agent like a sperm model. Uh, is it affect sperm DNA? Uh, does it uh, increase the uh, uh, DNA fragmentation in the sperm? I will tell you honestly, I don't know. I never, I never read a study showing the influence of uh, the theophylline or pentoxyphylin of the phosphodiesterase on the uh, uh, on the uh, nuclear part of the spermatozoa. We we use a in a concentration of uh, this ten uh, percent. Yes, uh, one percent, one percent. Sorry, one percent. We use it. It is very very low. And I would say, 
the sperm don't stay for a long period in, the, in, in contact. In, in general, it is for a question of uh, 15 to 30 minutes maximum. Yes. Okay. But I cannot, I cannot, uh, uh, an answer. Maybe, do you have an answer? I don't know. Maybe you read something about this? I... Actually, I don't have, but I, uh, I doubt uh, the, uh, the efficiency of uh, agent like, uh, a chemical agent on a sperm DNA. Yeah, yes, but uh, yeah. because, uh, it inhibits uh, the, it is an inhibitor of the phosphodiesterase. Yes. I don't think that uh, for me it could affect the, the, integri the integrity of the DNA. No, no, I don't think so. I have another question. Uh, can we prepare testicular biopsy with very low count of sperm using double wash without uh, using a sperm ingredient? Uh, could you repeat the question, please? Sorry. Uh, can we prepare testicular biopsy uh, with very low count of sperm uh, by uh, using double wash technique instead of uh, using a sperm ingredient technique? Using a double wash technique by double washing the sperm? Only? Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. I would say you can do this, but if you do uh, double washing techniques, uh, you have to do afterwards uh, uh, collagenase, uh, enzymatic digestion, because if you don't uh, separate the tissue, it will be very, very difficult to find the spermatozoa and even to go with your ICSI pipette in between all the tissue because you know by experience that if you go with your ICSI pipette between the tubes, uh, directly the pipette stick uh, and uh, you cannot aspirate the sperm. So in case mm -hmm. that you don't uh, separate the tissue with gradient, I advise to uh, perform a collagenase uh, digestion. Okay. Uh, my last question. Uh, what do you think about the addition of antioxidant to cryoprotectants? Uh, ah. Cry uh, preservation to decrease the DNA uh, uh, damage from uh, cry toxicity. Yes, I know that is no uh, tendency to add a cry uh, antioxidant. Uh, uh, we use uh, uh, vitamin C. We have just a student uh, uh, in our lab that uh, use uh, vitamin C or alpha tocopherol, uh, and, and we will analyze this. But there is a tendency to uh, add uh, um, uh, antioxidant in the freezing media, yes. Actually, we, uh, uh, we add the uh, natural antioxidant to cryoprotectant and the sperm wash media in a study yes. uh, uh, of uh, master cysts and uh, it improved the quality of embryos and fertilization rate and DNA fragmentation after that. Yes, normally, yes, you have to. Because uh, I think this is very uh, no important because uh, no, we are in a way to analyze the sperm, not anymore uh, regarding the motility uh, and uh, the concentration, but more deep inside uh, the sperm and what uh, all the, the genome and the epigenome are very important factors that we have to protect very well. And also the mitochondria also, because they are very affected by the ROS. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Pierre, I have some questions for you yeah. from the, the audience. Yeah. Uh, any experience uh, uh, in cases with pinhead sperm, 100%? Um, we, 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 we stop. We, we do not think. No. No, it is a pin, pinhead sperm probably. It is, no, 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 it's no, no. Another question, globosospermia? Mm. Ah, globosospermia? In case of globosospermia, uh, you can use, then you have to, use, uh, you have to activate uh, your oocytes. Uh, uh, you use ionophore, uh, uh, and then you can observe, the, you can obtain the fertilization. Yes, yes, yes. I have a question, Dr. Hassan. Uh, Dr. Fauzi wants to ask you a question also, Pierre. Fauzi yeah. is the director uh, of a lot of uh, excellent centers here in Egypt, mm -hmm. and he has a lot of publications in the field of uh, IVF also. He's a lab director. He was ju just a student of Dr. Hassan. Uh, 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 I would like to ask you, about, uh, you mentioned that uh, collagenase or, uh, or enzymatic digestion has no effect, or possibly of no effect on uh, the sperm quality or sperm function. 
actually co we compared this in house uh, in our laboratory three years ago on uh, 2000, 230 or 220 or so cases uh, comparing the traditional uh, mincing technique of spray of yeah I, 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 sorry, sorry I don't say that uh, uh, for me I say the pentoxifiline and the, but the collagenase I say nothing about collagenase huh? I, maybe uh, we, we, we use collagenase very, very rarely. Uh, we tell yeah, you. Yeah. But, but, but our, our experience no about this yeah. is, is that as a, as a, uh, it, it shows some toxicity regarding the clinical outcome. That's just, just the comment. Yeah, yeah, but I, I think so because collagenase, you have to leave the sperm yeah. for a long period at 37 degrees, and all depends the the type of tissue and uh, the amount of tissue. No, I, but I mean, we, use, we use it very rarely where we don't find uh, a sperm uh, between all the, the tissue. But, bon. Yeah, I, I, I may, I may misunder, uh, misunderstand the, the issue, but uh, I, I feel that uh, uh, collagenase is, 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 is so far uh, under experimental condition. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. I have, thank you, Fauzi, for the question. Uh, Pierre, another question for you, experience in IMSI. Ah, experience, I would say, oh, this I can speak one hour if you want. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I would say that uh, IMSI, uh, no, I would say we do know uh, morph uh, the morphological uh, selection of the sperm is very important. So, most of the time, all our procedure, we perform an IMC. I would say IMC is not a good word, word. I prefer to say we perform a better IMC. No, what, what can we say? It is more and more uh, uh, showed in the literature that abnormal sperm morphology uh, uh, related with uh, genome problem, but a lot of with epigenome problem, and also at the level of the histone transition. And uh, what we have observed, uh, because I cannot go in all the details, but what I can say, no, on more than uh, 5,000 uh, XC compared to uh, IMC, we have more blastocyst with uh, IMC. I would not say that we have 20% more blastocyst with more, but what is important, the group that benefits for a more accurate sperm selection is not the woman who has 15 or 30 years old, because you know in such case you will have uh, maybe six, seven, eight blastocyst. If you have 10 blastocysts instead of eight, doesn't matter. But for the woman who is 40 years old, that she gives you only four oocytes, and that the sperm is not so good. If you can have one blasto or two, you are the winner. But yes. so for one of the indication for uh, accurate, morphologically accurate sperm selection is uh, advanced age women, advanced women age, uh, low number of oocytes, and also when uh, the semen show uh, a low rate of normal form. Because all is a question of probability to select a good spermatozoa. If you select a good one, more, I would not say that a morphological, morphologically good one is a normal DNA because they find that in normal spermatozoa we can have also hypermethylation uh, also and that is uh, uh, correlated with high rate of abortion even even the sperm is normal but if uh, the you can select more uh, better spermatozoa uh, you can increase the rate of blastocyst and know that we have no very uh, accurate vitrification procedure. One blastocyst more is 
the uh, higher chance of pregnancy. Okay. Yeah. Uh, another question. Uh, any lab technique that could be helpful in high DNA fragmentation in sperm? And what is high DNA fragmentation? Ah, the high DNA fragmentation, I use all the time the, uh, the, uh, the threshold of Evanson 31%. Yes. So any lab technique that is helpful? But in, no, I would in... say that, uh, you know, the DNA fragmentation, um, uh, not all the lab are doing DNA fragmentation. Eh? Uh, for example, here in Belgium, we don't do it. In Austria, they, they have a kind, they, they call this the molecular diagnostic of the sperm. That means that you have chromatin analysis, DNA analysis, uh, uh, then the protamine also, uh, uh, and all these things. So it is more accurate, but it is a diagnostic. But after that, this didn't help you to say, okay, I will treat after what this patient in this way or in this way. This is something else. It's only to an explanation of the infertility. Okay. Uh, if an ejaculate is 100% immotile, do I need to do testicular biopsy? That's another question. But I would say that uh, what I explained, if you have 100% immotile, is that uh, all the vit vitality tests are negative, then uh, you, do, uh, you have to do a testicular biopsy. If uh, there is no, uh, if uh, the hyposmotic swelling test is negative, if the uh, mobile uh, solution uh, show no increase in the motility, then you have to do a testicular biopsy. If you cannot do, if you, it is not possible to do, to do it, then you have to uh, freeze the oocyte. Uh, all these questions. So testicular, so testicular sperm is not better than a hypoosmolar positive sperm. I, I would say that no. If I see this, is all, all is a question of uh, if I have no uh, sperm ejaculate. Okay, because this is a question of organization. I say okay, no sperm. I find mortal never. A doctor will never will accept to say, okay, no to the man, listen, we find spermatozoa only after uh, increasing the motility with uh, uh, pantoxifiline. Uh, maybe in the next attempt, if the first attempt will not work, then maybe we'll propose. Uh, go to us. No, no, what we can do, and this is, could be true, is, for example, a patient, the woman, give 15 oocytes, and this is quest, this quest, discussion with the patient and the uh, medical doctor, we can say, okay, your attempt, we can do half with the ejaculate and we freeze the other half, maybe for a next attempt with the testicular biopsy. We can do this also. Not to put all or in a And also a testicular biopsy that we can do this totally asynchronous then. Uh, not to get uh, with the next uh, pickup. So there are no, I would say, with uh, the outside vitrification, uh, give you plenty of possibility in the management of uh, an IVF cycle. No? Uh, we have plenty of solutions. Yeah. Yes. Uh, another question, what about tratosospermia issue? What about tratosospermia? Tratosospermia? Yeah. Uh, I, I would say that uh, this... Uh, it is a diff difficult uh, question to, to answer what is the, uh, when we look the WHO, eh, the threshold, then we say that a woman that has 3% uh, normal form and another uh, man has 3% normal form and another man has 5% normal form, can we say is there a huge difference between 3 and 5? This is complicated. And in Belgium, no, we are thinking about this to say, finally, uh, when we receive the report of the, the general lab, uh, before they say, uh, be careful, terato, no terato, no, they don't say. They say, they give you only a percentage and we have to decide ourselves. 
and there is no conclusion because we don't know exactly uh, to conclude. But it is true that with, with the IMC, I remember with this long time ago, this more than 10 years ago, I prepared a presentation for an history. I had on that time 1,146 uh, IMC. And out of this 146 XC, only 14 at 100% abnormal form. That means this quite uh, quite low. 100% normal form is quite low. Yes, quite low. In general, uh, yes, yes. Red red cell lysing solution. Yeah. I, uh, I tell you honestly, I never use it. I know that in the Free University of Brussels. Uh, Greta Verheyen sometimes use it when they have. But if you clean very well your tissue before starting uh, the scratching uh, of the tissue, uh, uh, you don't have to use this. No, no. This is. For, for all, a lot of doctors are asking for the presentation of uh, Dr. Pierre. It will be on uh, every YouTube site. Pierre gave us the permission. It yeah, will yeah. be tomorrow on, on every YouTube, and it will be also on the every embryology interest group. And I have here a request for you from Dr. Ashraf of Ali Pierre. Uh, can, can you please share, share some live sessions during the next month or two months at your leisure uh, on every interest group of embryology? Yes, no problem. Uh, you, you, sent, you sent me a mail uh, two, three days in advance. So I can uh, plan uh, my schedule then, uh, okay. Uh, another question also, we have a, a Reader's Digest. Can you supply us with some papers, full papers that you think are important and interesting uh, to advance this field? Y yes, no, no, no problem at all, no problem at all, no, no problem at all, no. Pierre, on behalf of myself and on behalf of uh, Egyptian Foundation for Reproductive Medicine and Embryology, a nonprofit organization, and uh, with Dr. Madhat Amir, the Vice President of the EFRI, with me, and Dr. Nihal and Dr. Mahdi, and uh, all the doctors, we thank you very much. Yes, thank you. For being always helpful for, yes, for my own. Yes, thank you. 10 years with me. For, uh, I would say that I am happy to, I would say, uh, one minute more, I am very happy that I can continue to have contact because, no, I am 68 years old. It is time to <laughs> retire. Time to retire. I'm 65. I am 65. No, 68. <laughs> but I am uh, happy that I can continue uh, all this. Uh, I God, would say, uh, God bless you. Uh, and we, this we... discussion and uh, share writing papers and all these things. Yeah, yes, yes. We love you, Pierre. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very much for everyone, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you very, very much. Have, Have a good day. Nice Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.